Hey again, so you see it in the movie view. Die For Me by Amy Plum and I'll just start by reading the back of the book. My life had always been blissfully, wonderfully normal, but it only took one moment to change everything. Suddenly my sister Georgia and I were orphans. We put our lives into storage and moved to Paris to live with our grandparents. And I knew my shattered heart, my shattered life, would never feel normal again. Then I met Vincent. Mysterious, sexy, unnervingly charming Vincent Delacroix appeared out of nowhere and swept me off my feet. Just like that, I was in danger of losing my heart all over again. Of course, nothing is ever that easy, because Vincent is no normal human. He has a terrifying destiny, one that puts his life at risk every day. He also has enemies, immortal enemies, who are determined to destroy him and all of his kind. While I'm fighting to piece together the remnants of my life, can I risk putting my heart as well as my life and my family's in jeopardy for a chance at love? Um, so starting off with the cover, it's a gorgeous cover and um, I included this on my top 10 favourite covers ever and I love the black, it's the black bits are shiny and then they carry around. And then the Parisian background, and then the pink, it's all very, very gorgeous. Um, so I've had this book a while, and I don't know why I haven't read it till now, but I don't know, I just hadn't. So I'm, I'm really glad that I finally did. I would give this a 4.5 out of 5. Um, and I like that it it stands out from other paranormal books. Um, it tries to be very unique. Um, I would say that it is kind of unique, but it does have some similarities with Dead Beautiful. Um, Dead Beautiful. Yeah, I can't speak. Dead Beautiful by Von Woon, um, which I have reviewed um, on here. Um, and it's only some similarities. The whole plot's not the same, but um, the girl loses her family in an accident. Um, Dead Beautiful Rene loses her family and then the paranormal sort of beings are kind of similar um, but in this she goes down a different direction with them and they end up being like um, heroes that risk their lives every day um, so it's quite good I really really like that um, character wise Kate she was okay sometimes she annoyed me um, because she sometimes can't deal with what Vincent is and then other times she says that she can so she rejects him a few times and then freaks out and then decides that she's miserable without him so that kind of irritated me a little for a little bit um, but she's worried about um, dealing with death after um, her parents dying she feels that she can't handle it well yeah fair enough but don't keep doing it because that was, that was just like really irritating um, Vincent, he's a great hero. Um, yeah, he's a really sweet romantic guy because again, he was he was born like in the nineteen twenties. You find that out. That's not really a spoiler. Um, when you find out what he, I don't want to spoil what he is because it's slightly different than yeah you know, other authors have been doing. So I like that it's original. Um. And then you have her so her oh, I can't speak, I'm very sorry. Um, her sister Georgia. Um she irritated me a little bit, but it's because she's the complete opposite of Kate. She's a complete extrovert, she just goes off as a party girl. Whereas Kate likes to sit in cafes and read. That's another thing. That in apparent normal or YA fiction at the moment, they um heroine always has to be bookish and read all the time. I mean you don't have to be bookish for to be, you know, that doesn't make a great heroine all the time. Yeah, so she likes to read. Great, but you don't have to have that to have a great heroine. Like, um, one of my favourite books is Nevermore by Kelly Cray, and in that the heroine is, um, like, a, she's a cheerleader, and just because she doesn't, you know, enjoy reading, doesn't mean she can't, um, read but she doesn't you know she isn't always sat reading something um so i don't know why this is happening in YA fiction at the moment why um all the girls have to read i don't know kelly cray managed to make a really great heroine without having her read but whatever um 
I, th I don't, um, I thought maybe the end was sort of anticlimactic, maybe. Um, you have this fear that this bad guy is going to, you know, completely destroy Vincent and his kin. Because um, him and his kin live in this great big house in, in Paris, um, keeping themselves all safe. Um, and I felt like he was built up as this really evil, horrible guy. Um, and then it didn't take that long for it to sort of come to an end. It is the first in the series, the first in the Revenant series. Um, but what I liked about this actually was that it was kind of conclusive. Um, there is going to be more, obviously, but the end wasn't a massive cliffhanger. You could easily put it down and not worry what's going to happen next for ages. It, you can just pick up the next one when it's out. You don't, you're not there going, oh my god, I wonder what happened to them. I must find out. So that's nice and refreshing. Um, it's 341 pages of standardish text. Um, the chapters are kind of small so that helps it be really well paced it is amazingly fast paced um you could easily get this done in one sitting i think if you had nothing planned for the day you just wanted to read you could get this done in a day it took me two days um because i i didn't want to read it all in one go um i finished it this afternoon um in the garden sunbathing and i think i'm burnt again or i'm going to be damn it I kind of got sucked in and then I couldn't put it down and then I got burnt. Oh well. Um, I would definitely, definitely recommend this. It stands out from a lot of YA paranormal uh, fiction. Um, there are some little things that you may find irritating. Like I sometimes found that she would say Kate was leaving Vincent and then she would skip whatever the hell Kate was going to be doing next until she next saw Vincent so it would be like oh after I left him I went home and read and then it would be um, she skips like two days until she sees Vincent again so I'm just like you must have done something while Vincent wasn't around so it just concentrated on um, her and Vincent for a while and then like I said her like rejection of him was kind of annoying um, when she kept freaking out um, yeah, freak out once, but don't keep doing it. It's just irritating. Um, but yeah, I love the paranormal beings. I thought they were great, and I can't wait to read more of them. Um, I liked all his kin, um, like Charlotte, Charles, um, Ambrose and Jules. They were all different personalities, and they were um, great fun to read. Um, so yeah, definitely check this one out for fans of paranormal YA fiction. Or if you um, feel like... Um, why a paranormal fiction is becoming too samey check this out because it's going along a different route to a lot of um, the paranormal genre so if you're um, wary do check this one out and have a reading <laughs>